During the pandemic, we often find ourselves alone. But when was the last time you chose to stay with yourself? The difference between feeling lonely and choosing solitude can be a bit difficult to understand, especially for extroverts. Well, hope I can show you that you can still have a good time without any other human around. And some tips on exploring solo. Tell the parents I'm still alive. You good? Yeah. Well, okay. it's aired down a bit, so it's not that bumpy on the this kind of road. Oh yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought you were changing your tire. Oh no, no, yeah, I'm all good. Thank you. Yeah. Let's take it slow. Where you go, I go too. And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow. Who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time wherever you are. As cold weather slowly approached, I decided to embark on a solo trip to the Rockies. I've been going on group trips over the summer, and by group trips, I mean over 10 vehicles. Yes, it was fun meeting everyone, but over time, my introverted intuition needs a little recharge in solitude. Destination? Meeting my girl and her boyfriend in Banff, but the journey along the way, it's all mine. One cool thing about not taking a passenger is that you can set up a sleep platform somehow inside a car and I don't have to set up and tear down tent anymore. And it looks super cozy. I think I need to have some, you know, those kind of van life, a lot of strip lights and all that. Remember to take your vitamins. Okay, we'll crack some egg. Let's make it a slow-mo. Wow, it's a double. The idea of actually coming out alone was actually not new. The other day I just remember that when I was 18, I went to New York and Boston by myself. The border guy, um, custom guy, asked me why I'm alone, why I'm not with other people, and then I was just stunned. And I said, why would I? I just thought I wanted to come, and then I grabbed the ticket and I'm, I'm here. So even at that age, really, I guess I'm just alone, used to being alone, and when I want to do something and go out and do it, um, it's, it's, it is a blessing to really have the freedom to, you know, without worrying about too much and just go do whatever you want, whatever you have in mind.
to stay here tonight. Um, just out of the national park area, so this is Crowland, you can camp wherever. There is a small fire pit already circled up, but um, by looking at the access coming down, I don't think I can fit a car in there, so I'll probably just move some rocks up there to make a new little fire pit. Actually, the little access trail you can walk down to the river. concern about me coming out myself. Um, actually on the way I saw quite a few cattle just roaming freely on the road. That might be a good sign because usually it means there is no bear. In terms of bear, we are in Canada, we will see some. Actually on my way on Highway 1 towards Banff, I saw at least two just right beside the highway. It is fall and they are coming out looking for food so it's something I need to watch out about. Um, there's a new map called Top Notch Map. It's um, a guy actually in BC. He created a way more, way more detailed Gaia map layer. For example, when we zoom into this area, all these signs you see, those means you might be in danger. And speaking of safety, since I am out traveling alone, I grabbed this Zolio a GPS communicator. Just to update my mom where I am, let's turn it on and tell tell the parents I'm still alive. A trick to get the best signal is to leave the device out uncovered and also put on in this signal amplifier hat. So you are essentially using your whole body to conduct signal and then you can re... Yeah, that's a bad joke. Anyways, <laughs> let's go on to the app. When it spins like that, it means it's sending. And there you have it. Oh, here we got all crumbled overnight. Guess we're wearing curls today. Some of the road might be actively logging, so. Usually at the beginning of every road, there'll be a sign telling you which channel this road is using. Call your kilometer mark. It'll save you some blind corner surprise. There's a different type of blitz when you stay in prolonged solitude. You are no longer acting out of duty as a daughter, wife or mother, employee or manager, a Chinese girl, a transplant or CBC. You're only responsible for yourself. Okay, maybe also your vehicle and belongings. Only when you take yourself out of those social expectations can you gain clarity of what you truly want. We often mix up what we like with what we do to keep others happy. Over time, you tend to lose your sense of self. Wait, why am I doing this? It doesn't even make me happy. Well, you tell me. This is the longest free ferry in BC, and perhaps the whole world. Each trip takes about 35 minutes. I see sick easily, but hey, it's free and I'm close by. Why not? Every time getting in and out of ferries always makes me feel re feel really ceremonial. You know, walking on the red carpet. <laughs> a little too dramatic. All right, we are officially in Alberta. Got an hour ahead. Lots
lost an hour. Alright guys, uh, just thought I wanted to debrief about what happened in the last two weeks in preparation for this trip. Um, about over a month ago uh, on my Facebook I saw this ad from onsalt.com for a pretty cheap price, uh, three nights at Banff. I showed it to my friend Julia and then originally I decided you know, wanted to take her and then she ended up buying her own coupon and bought her own room as well because somebody got a boyfriend and she's bringing him alone. So I guess this trip will be somewhat solo in part of in the way because I still want to take some back roads and uh, she doesn't have a four-wheel drive herself. So the only deadline really for this trip was the hotel booking on Monday. Prior to this, I had a bumper built which you can actually see here I got a swing out right now it still needs some work I gave my welder three days to work on it and during the first fitment when we were in the shop we realized the first two plates the bottom and the face one and uh, the main bumper weren't fitting so phoned coastal off-road and they did set me a new uh, piece two days later which then shorten our time for my welder to put it together. So at that point, I realized, okay, I need to bring it to somewhere that he can work over time with no time constraint. So we went to the garage and then basically just like walked at home, uh, worked to past midnight for a couple of days. Really, I, the last day I saw my welder, he looks like he was gonna die. I felt really so bad about it, but they did a really good job and squeezing all the time and finish all of this. In the meantime, since my car was in the garage, we had the time to deal with other things. My axle was leaking. <laughs> Took the axle out, sent to EBI. They were able to get it done same day. Put it back in. Took it out for a test drive. Found some new noise. My driver front and lower control on ball joint was gone. As we were working on a ball joint, took the wheel out. Hey right, guys, let's get this lower ball joint done. Just remove the wheels and everything, and what do you see? Do you see what I see? What do you see? What do you see there? <gasps> it's okay, Monique. It's okay. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. Okay. Found out the outer tie rod and the boot was gone. But luckily we had parts from a touring tamer and put that in quickly. On the same day we finished powder coating. At night my boulder came and fitted a gang. My spare tire can really fit on this guy. My OEM steel wheel didn't have enough back space to clear the arm. So my tire was sitting on the arm and the bolt was still not fully through. That's why my spare is still on the roof as of now. Maybe I'll run a, a spacer for it, but um, that's another part to need to worry about. The next day, booked an alignment. I thought that was the last thing I need to do. So this was Friday for the alignment. I was planning to leave on Saturday. The alignment shop called me saying that my passenger inner tie rod end was gone and they cannot do an alignment because it won't. First, it won't hold an alignment. Second, it is really dangerous to drive consider I have such a long trip by myself. And the guys told me, you need to take care of this right away. It was a Friday. Okay, nothing opens on Saturday. Pull the connection from Lord Cole, sourced at the last locking net in BC. The next morning, bugged another friend to put it in in the early morning. Later the day, we were able to get an alignment done at Toyota. So that was that. I guess, yeah, I've been taught to never really make a plan. I really didn't have that much of a plan this time, except the hotel booking. I've never had so many things went wrong in such a short period of time and then wouldn't write all at once. It just felt like the curveball just kept, you know, changing direction, telling me, yeah, you're fucked. No, you're okay. And you're fucked again. Anyways, we're out here and we're good. But yeah, I guess this is what it takes to own a car that's 15 years old. I've never had a car at this age. Uh, that's requires so many maintenance kind of things. Not really a used to it but hopefully nothing fall out during the trip <laughs> otherwise I will be really pissed I don't feel very good oh why do I do this to myself I forgot I'm seasick are they going reversed it seems like they 
turn around and we're going 